One of the questions I get asked most often is what the best way to learn machine learning is if you want to get your first job in the field. If you're considering machine learning engineering, data science, or AI research, you're facing an important decision. How should you learn the skills you need? Should you invest in a master's degree, join a boot camp, self-study, or maybe just build your own projects from scratch? Today I'm breaking down what works and what doesn't based on data from recent job market analyses and my years of experience as a career coach and mentor in the field. My goal is to help you make an informed decision that aligns with your circumstances and career objectives, because making the wrong decision here could mean wasting tens of thousands of dollars, losing years of your time, or getting stuck in a career path that just doesn't match your goals. There are several factors to consider when choosing your machine learning learning path. First, job market requirements and expectations. Then the investment you'll need to make, both in terms of money and your time. We also need to consider the opportunity costs involved, and of course your personal learning style and circumstances. So what exactly are your options? When it comes to breaking into machine learning, there are typically four main paths people take. Of course, self-study learning through online courses, books, and projects. There's boot camps, which are intensive, structured three to 12 month programs, master's degree programs, one to three year graduate degrees in machine learning, computer science, or related fields, and PhD programs, four to six year research focused doctoral degrees. To help you decide which is best for you, I've analyzed each option based on four critical factors that will directly impact your career journey. First, job requirements. Here's what the job listings are really asking for. For data science roles, about 70 to 80% listed degree preference with roughly half wanting graduate degrees. For entry level positions, a master's has become pretty standard. Machine learning engineer positions are a little more flexible with many accepting a bachelor's in computer science or engineering, though about 22% still require a master's and 36% request a PhD, which is certainly not nothing. For AI researcher roles, overwhelmingly, these require PhDs. If you wanna work at OpenAI or DeepMind creating new algorithms, you will need a doctorate. But we all know job postings aren't always completely aligned Aligned with the skills that you actually need to do the work. You might wonder how much it actually matters if you don't have the expected degree. The reality is there are resume scanning systems that filter candidates without required degrees. Many companies automatically screen out resumes that don't meet education requirements before a human ever sees them. That doesn't mean you necessarily need a degree, but without one, you'll need to get creative. We'll talk about strategies for overcoming the lack of credentials in a little bit. But first, we need to think about the costs associated with each path. If you choose poorly here, you might spend years or thousands of dollars on a program only to realize you you didn't need that credential, or worse, that you're still not qualified for the roles you actually want even with it. Let's start with self-study, which of course is the most affordable option. The financial investment might be anything from basically nothing to maybe like a thousand dollars for quality books and courses. The timeline is super flexible and you'll be able to control how fast you learn. One of the biggest advantages here is the minimal opportunity cost, especially if you're learning while maintaining your current job. But this path does require a lot of self-discipline and motivation since you'll need to structure your own learning journey. Next, boot camps. Here you're looking at a more significant financial commitment with programs typically costing around $5,000 up to $20,000 on the high end. The trade-off is a much more concentrated timeline of anywhere from three to 12 months. Many boot camps offer part-time options that let you keep your day job, which is a really big deal for those who can't afford to give up their income or just don't wanna miss out on time in the job market. The structured curriculum and regular deadlines help maintain your momentum and your progress, which many learners find very valuable. The return on investment can be impressive quick if the program leads directly to employment, which is why boot camps often advertise their job placement and may even assist you with landing a job. Next, on to master's programs. For master's degrees, the cost varies dramatically depending on where you study. On the more affordable end, online programs like Georgia Tech's OMSCS might cost around $10,000 total, while elite private universities in the US can easily be 100K. You're typically looking at a timeline of one to two years for full-time study or two to three years if you're taking classes part-time. One significant advantage here is that the credential is globally recognized and relatively standardized, which matters a lot in an international job market. But the opportunity cost can be substantial if you're studying full-time and give up your full-time employment. Finally, let's talk about PhD programs. These programs are generally funded, which means they pay you usually 30 or $40,000 a year to cover living expenses. But the timeline stretches four to six years, and this is where the opportunity cost becomes a really big deal because we're potentially talking about 400,000 to over a million dollars in foregone earnings compared to what you might make in industry roles during that same period. The trade-off is creating deep expertise, which could lead to a better job or a job more aligned with your interests, but there's no guarantee. The financial part of the calculation ultimately depends on your current situation. A recent graduate might view opportunity costs differently than someone mid-career who's currently making a lot of money. But cost isn't the only thing that matters when deciding on which path to pursue. As we all know, skills are just part of the picture for getting a job. It also matters who you 
know, and the networking component of how you learn is frequently underestimated. So let's talk about the networking opportunities, or lack thereof, in each of these options. When you join a university program, you're gaining access to a powerful ecosystem. These programs offer extensive alumni networks, opportunities to interact closely with classmates, and direct connections to faculty who often have industry ties. Universities host regular recruiting events where companies actively seek out students, and they've built structured pathways to internships that can lead directly to full-time offers. Many employers even have established recruiting pipelines with specific universities. Boot camps take a different but equally valuable approach to networking. The best ones have strong partnerships with companies who specifically look to them for talent. Throughout your program, you'll likely hear from industry guest speakers or instructors who become part of your network. And of course, you'll also ideally make strong ties with the other learners in your cohort. The self-study path requires you to build your network independently, which demands a different kind of effort. You'll need to proactively attend meetups and conferences and actually talk to people, even if it means stepping outside your comfort zone. Contributing to open source projects can put your work in front of experienced developers who might become mentors or references, and active participation in online communities can help establish your presence in the field. You'll also need to be very comfortable reaching out directly to folks on LinkedIn with thoughtful and personalized messages. And of course, don't forget about creating visible projects and content that showcases your skills which will be 100% necessary without standard credentials. This independent networking approach requires significant initiative, consistency, and social confidence. Not everyone finds this natural or comfortable, but it's going to be absolutely essential for success on this self-taught path. You'll need to be deliberate about building these connections over time, especially if resume scanners aren't going to be your best friend. That said, the self-study path has a major advantage that shouldn't be overlooked. While you'll shoulder more responsibility for your learning and networking, you gain the freedom to focus on what truly excites you and what's direct directly relevant to your career goals. And in a field like AIML where breakthroughs happen constantly, this flexibility is really important. Which brings us to another important consideration. The speed at which the field evolves creates an interesting challenge that affects each learning path differently. University programs provide depth and strong theoretical foundations, but their curricula can significantly lag behind industry practices. This means you could spend months learning techniques that folks in the field moved beyond years or decades ago. And important practical skills for actually getting a job, like SQL for example, may not be taught at all. Boot camps, on the other hand, can pivot fairly quickly. They're driven by market demands and job placement metrics, so they're incentivized to update their content to match industry requirements pretty fast. The best boot camps have instructors who are actively working in the field and can bring current practices directly into your classroom. They'll teach you the tools and frameworks that companies are actually using right now, which gives you a huge advantage in interviews. The self-study approach offers complete flexibility to focus on whatever cutting edge tools and techniques you think are interesting. This ability to stay current is incredibly valuable, especially in specialized areas that are evolving rapidly, but it can also be confusing and hard to navigate when you don't actually know what new thing is important. Without guidance, you can get stuck in tutorial hell pretty quickly. PhD research programs present an interesting case because they can actually be ahead of industry in specific domains. As a doctoral student, you might be creating the very techniques that companies will adopt years later, but this advantage only applies to your narrow area of specialization, and you almost definitely won't be learning skills required to actually put your research into production. So even once you finish your PhD, there's likely still a chunk of work ahead of you if you want to work in industry. Now that we've examined all four factors across each learning path, you might be feeling a little bit overwhelmed with all the options. Before we dive into which specific path is best for your situation, one thing that will be a non-negotiable regardless of which learning route you choose is building super solid fundamentals. That's where today's sponsor, Brilliant, comes in. Whether you're going the self-study route, complementing a boot camp, or even working through a master's program, having strong foundations in math, statistics, and core machine learning concepts will accelerate your progress dramatically. What makes Brilliant different is their really intuitive, interactive, visual approach to learning. Instead of just memorizing formulas or watching passive videos, you're actively solving problems that build strong intuition. I've used it to strengthen everything from linear algebra to probability theory, and they have excellent courses on modern topics like how LLMs actually work under the hood. Brilliant is a great option for consistent studying because you can learn in focused 10 to 15 minute sessions on your phone during commutes or lunch breaks. When I was preparing for graduate level machine learning courses, those short daily sessions on Brilliant helped me fill knowledge gaps without feeling overwhelmed. Whether you choose self-study, a boot camp, or formal education, you'll be glad you invested in these fundamentals early. If you want to try Brilliant for yourself, they're offering my viewers a full 30-day free trial plus 20% off an annual premium subscription. Just click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to get started. Now let's talk about which specific path makes the most sense for your particular situation. It should be pretty obvious by now that there's no universal best option. The optimal path depends on three key elements, your target role, your personal circumstances, and your preferred learning style. Let's break this down by career trajectory to make it practical for you. For aspiring data scientists, 
Get a master's degree if you lack a quantitative background, need structured learning, or you want to target competitive companies. Programs like Georgia Tech's Online Masters of Computer Science offer excellent ROI while allowing you to keep working. Choose a boot camp if you already have a technical bachelor's or a master's in another field and you want to quickly pivot into data science. Look for programs with strong job placement rates and industry partnerships. Or go self-taught if you have exceptional project building discipline and networking skills. Plan to dedicate 15 to 20 hours a week for a year or two and create portfolio work that far exceeds typical bootcamp projects. For aspiring machine learning engineers, a technical bachelor's and self-study is sufficient if you're targeting startups or mid-sized companies and can demonstrate solid skills with challenging projects. Get a master's degree if you're aiming for FANG-level companies or want to fast-track your career progression. Focus on programs with strong, practical components. And skip the PhD. The extra years of specialized research aren't going to translate into higher-value implementation-focused engineering roles for the most part. Now, for AI researchers, a PhD is non-negotiable. For research positions at places like DeepMind or OpenAI, this credential is essentially required. Choose this path only only if you're passionate about advancing the theoretical boundaries of the field. In rare cases, combining a master's with published papers or significant open source contributions can substitute, but these exceptions are uncommon. There's also another option worth considering that often gets overlooked in these discussions, building your own machine learning powered products or services while you learn, potentially even in place of pursuing a job. This entrepreneurial approach has some unique advantages. First, it completely bypasses traditional hiring barriers. No one asks about your credentials if you made the company and are selling something genuinely useful and high quality. It also creates tangible proof of your abilities that goes far beyond what a resume can convey. And there's the potential to make some money while you're learning, which is a nice bonus. Of course, this path definitely isn't for everyone or even for most people. It requires comfort with uncertainty and a broader skill set beyond just machine learning. But for those with an entrepreneurial mindset, this can be a really strong alternative. Before you decide, here are a few more critical points to keep in mind. First, your learning discipline. Self-study fails for a significant chunk of people who attempt it. If you've abandoned online courses before, structured programs may serve you better. Next, your financial runway. Calculate exactly how long you can go without income. If it's less than the program length plus at least six months for job searching, choose part-time options and learn while you're working. Third, your existing technical foundation. If you're starting from zero, double your expected timeline or choose more structured programs. You'll also want to consider your networking capabilities. Are you introverted or new to tech? Programs with built-in networking will be really helpful for you. And finally, your visa or location requirements. International students often need formal degrees for work authorizations, so that makes these programs a lot more appealing. All right, so let me summarize everything we've talked about and what is important for you to remember when making this decision. Match your path to your destination. Different machine learning roles have totally different credential requirements. Be brutally honest about your learning style. Self-study sounds appealing until you're six months in and you haven't made any progress. Choose a path that works with your actual habits, not your ideal self. Invest in your network deliberately and budget time for relationship building regardless of which path you choose. Calculate the full cost. I really can't overstate this. It's not just the tuition. Factor in opportunity costs, time to employment, and long-term career trajectory when making your decision. And of course, start building immediately. While you're deciding on formal education, begin creating projects right now. The candidate with mediocre credentials but an impressive portfolio often beats the one with prestigious credentials but nothing real to show for it. The reality is the machine learning hiring landscape rewards demonstrated problem solving ability above everything else. The most successful candidates I've mentored focused on building and showcasing solutions to real problems, regardless of their educational background. If you wanna learn more about building portfolio projects that stand out, check out the video on that that's up next. Good luck on your journey and I'll see you next time.